Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So I have a few of you subscribers asking me of how to use the K tag, and I said that I was going to actually record one of those process uh, soon, and here we are. All right, so we have a computer. I have a radio ready on uh, on the uh, bench. Let's say, let me turn this to the right color. I have the app already ready to go. And I have, like you said, uh, you can see the BDM set up with the K tag. I'm going to remove the computer pretty soon just to show you from here uh, how I have the connections done. And I mean, obviously, you need to remove the computer, open it up, and make sure it's stocking, which I have a simulator for that. And you guys have seen this before. So I can put powers and grounds and read codes and blah 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 but so the k tag is in order for me to copy all the calibrations uh the eprom information very fast and and easy and then if i need it later for the same computer or any other computer with the same numbers i can use that for um you know make sure the computer goes back to the customer working good and that's what i'm doing today so I'm going to set you guys up into the tripod and I'll show you in a second how to do the connections and ribbons and uh, KTAC, uh, Alien Tech, they show you all the process really easy. Uh, it's nothing um, to, re to be really extra careful. The only thing that you really need to do is follow the instruction as they recommend, which is, you know, make sure that you do a backup before you do any reading or any writing onto any of the uh, you know, processors or uh, EPROMs that you'll be working on. All right, so let me let me set you guys up into the tripod and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got everything uh, removed from here because I want to start from scratch from, you know, with you, well, pretty much from scratch because as you can see, I got the computer apart and I want to show you, let me start the screen recording here. So I'll be doing the start recording now so we have um the connector that uh ktac uh, asked for is is this one that we see on the screen right now um i'm going to put my finger so you guys can see so with this it's pretty pretty easy to see i just this is the only thing that i want to show you uh where it's located um is next to the microprocessor and those two A20 resistors. So that's where the JTAG connections are. Uh, actually, the JTAGs are the red one, uh, the RAM ones, but those are the ones uh, KTAG is recommending me to use. So this is the only thing that I'll be doing in there. So let me um, now start the screen recording so we can see the KTAG. Yes, let me double check the, yeah, the recording is still going. I like to keep that in there because I have lost many, many um, times the recording. So while you solder, uh, also, you know, solder that on the board, I usually also double check the connections, make sure there is not shorter. So that's something quick that you can do too as well is, you know, use your um, multimeter. And hopefully you guys can see that. This is the uh, multimeter that you can remove the, the face from. And I like it for that reason because I can put it somewhere I can see it. Like that is actually perfect for me. And I'm just going to go Make sure it's, yep, that is continuity. Then I'm just going to check pin by pin and make sure they're not, you know, grounded to any of the ad adjacent pins, which is not. And then the next one. And the next one. And so on. I already check and all are good. So make sure that you have no shorted uh, pins because they're very close to each other and that can absolutely happen. And if you do that, you can uh, damage the computer. Right now it's not connected and it will not, you know, nothing will happen. But if you 
connected to power like that, then it will create a damage. So the other thing, uh, let me go over to uh, KTAC here. So this is uh, what I'm working on. I'm going to select that. And these are the instructions. You know, it's very easy to uh, follow the instructions in here. Connect to the ECU, I just click here. And then select the, the right uh, ECM that I'm working on, which is this one. And it tells me pretty much, you know, where you need to connect uh, using the direct adapter. That's the cable that I need to use. And it tells you which one is power and ground, which is the only thing that we will be using for this specific uh, computer again. We need to open that again. I go over to here. And then um, also it tells you the adapter that you need to use, which is this one. And make sure that you read this number, the 06301, because there is actually three of them in the, uh, um, on the cables and everything. They look really close and they're not the same. Just be careful with that. Um, let me go back to, it takes it out all the time, all the way out. So. And then the only thing that we need uh, besides that, which I don't see here, let me see. Meeting programming instructions, no. Oh yeah, it's right here, yeah. So all you need is, this computer has only two plugs, so A and B, and the plug is actually marked inside as it shows in there, so. I'm going to go to connector um, A, and I need, so the positive is 23, just three cables, two, two grounds and one positive, uh, and then 16 and 24 are my grounds. I did these cables myself. They do broad some. I just like to extend a little bit. So that's all I do here, right? Now I can also, set up on the connector um, as they show you here okay that's again the the adapter that you need to solder into the computer and now connect the ribbon cable which they give you the number the 144300 t100 which is this one this will go uh, into uh, the computer facing it the same way so follow the same processor and the connector in here so you're because you can put it either way so just to follow the those directions now i'm going to set it up on the board i mean on the bdm um, frame and then the ribbon gets connected to the k tag which i already have uh, ready to go on on the computer connected usb and power that's all you need to it comes with a, its own power source because in like in this case i have just extended this for the grounds like that i can use it like this it's just an alligator clip and i'm using the red one for the power And that's it. Pretty much, that's all you really need to do. Connect that to the uh, BD, uh, the JTAG, sorry, the KTAG ribbon to, it's, I mean, you cannot really mix it. It's pretty, pretty simple. And as you can see, everything is self-explanatory. Um, here are instructions on uh, reading and, and so on, if you guys want to read. I also, it says, let me see, do, 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 do. further instruction, backup. This is something really important that I was mentioning. To make a backup use, uh, always make a backup before you read or do anything. The way you need to do that is make sure the backup is selected like it shows in here, and then you click read. Then after that, if you want to uh, just read something specifically, let's say you already have the whole computer backup, and or you just want to read the EEPROM, uh, you just deselect the backup and you select either one, the one you want to uh, read. 
And then when you are restoring, let's say you are replacing an EEPROM that is damaged, like I will be doing on this computer, but I'm not going to show that. It's pretty simple. All you got to do is reconnect us up, put the EEPROM, and set up the files back to the computer. All right, right after you do that, you just click OK. Select the ECM you're working on, which in my case is this one. No flash. Again, just make sure the backup is selected. You don't touch anything else. And then don't work with the writing. You're just doing a backup. You're just going to click on read. If everything is connected well, it will start to do in the communication and doing the backup of the files. First, it, it tests the files. And then it does, like right now, like you see, it's reading the device. It's checking all the sectors of the microprocessor. As you can see, it says it's an engine 03 5.7 Bravo. If anything is wrong, corrupt the software, uh, it will tell you here. I couldn't read, something is wrong. So this is where you can tell the customer, sorry, but your computer information is destroyed. I need to replace a microprocessor or not, or you know, it can be fixed or not. It's always good to keep those files like like you'll see I already had this and I did this before but I wanted to show you in the video because this is how you do a backup you do a backup something happened you can always take these files and put it back in there you are 100% protected it's quick it's really uh, not that, uh, long term to do all you need to make sure is you have the right files and um, and that's it. I mean, I'm not going to save it. Because I already have it. But you can see right here it says reading successfully completed. And um, actually, you know what? Let me show you the files, how they got saved, because I should have resaved it. Mm -hmm. Got the documents. I got a whole bunch of um, stuff in here. And I got the calibrations. And these are this is what it saves. You cannot read this. It's just specifically for the K tag to be used back and forth. So, but when you want to write uh, back to a computer, uh, you can, again, select the back, just follow all the prompts. We already did that. We select the right computer and we are ready to restore. We can uh, just call here anything we want. We can restore any prompt. I'm not going to do because I obviously have it connected. But I can just select uh, in here, what do I want to restore? If it's just a prompt like I just did here, and I can write. That will take the file. It will open um, a menu um, to request where you have the file saved, which we already have, and I show you where. So again, guys, this is something simple. I hope you guys, again, are safe, stay home, and um, see you next time. Bye-bye.